Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee with the Captain. Uh, in front of the camera here, we have Captain Jan Miles. Behind the camera, we have Chief Mate Jeff Crosby, and uh, things are looking a little bit different this week. Uh, can you explain what's been going on? Somebody came along, a whole bunch of somebody's came along and took the cover off the boat. So uh, we're... Uh, we're sans to cover, so this is springtime, um, they tell me. Yeah, no, this is springtime. We're getting ready to go sailing. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the cover came off, uh, and uh, that means we shift our work from a little more down below than on deck, but we're gonna be showing you some stuff that's going on on deck as we begin the uprig. Sure. Uh, we're also continuing with uh, getting the uh, communication suite sorted out. It's been a major upgrade with what is the global marine distress and safety system, GMDSS. So we'll show you a little bit of what's going on in that. Um, and we have a little bit of compound area. Some of the bits of the boat are somewhere else. They're not all here. Notice, maybe you can see we do not have the wheel on board. It's going through a cosmetic uh, uh, experience. So. Uh, Jeff, we'll feed on. Yeah, so uh, I think the f our first stop, we're gonna wander up forward here. So the first spar that we're gonna be dealing with, uh, putting up in, or out into the rig is the jibboom, which is kind of an extension to the bowsprit. So all the way up forward here. Uh, just yesterday, this spar was laying on deck right over here. Um, so we rigged up some gantlins and halyards to be able to pick it up uh, and some tag lines to be able to push it out. And Captain Miles, can you kind of explain the process that happens from here? David, say hello. Howdy. <laughs> That's our bosun, David. <laughs> so the, uh, it's the same kind of thing as what happens with Totmus. So that is going to be telescoped, that jaboom is going to be telescoped out further. As it goes out further, we'll hook on some shrouds. So there's going to be a whisker shroud port and starboard and a, a martingale uh, harness. The forward leg of the martingale harness is going to go on the jaboom. That martingale comes back to the bottom of the so-called dolphin striker, actually martingale spreader, and that splits into two legs, comes back to the ship. So as the jaboom gets further and further out, the heel will eventually be slotted into the heel block that's on top of the bow sprit. The uh, martingale harness will be s stretching out underneath the jaboom. Um, the uh, whiskers for the jaboom will uh, stretch out and the whisker poles for the port and starboard whisker guys or stays will swing out and, cr and, and create a spread. Meanwhile, the jib halyard, uh, rather wire, and the jib top wire will be extending out through holes, B holes at the end of the jaboom. Um, and uh, remain slack until such time as we get the heel into the heel block. There's another lashing um, that is the uh, a, 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 a jaboom gammoning lashing that will put to uh, just forward of the block near that leather. And that'll go round and round and round and be frapped in very, very snug so that when the jaboom is given tension bending down, it will uh, not put all the load right on the block. It'll be spread between the gammon lashing and the pin that goes through the block. There's an iron cap that holds the end of the jib this end of the jaboom. And when that's all set, that's when we can begin the tightening process. And that takes forever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it sure does. It's a little tedious, <laughs> yeah. Lanyards get run and run and run until they're sneak up, snugging up. There's lubrication, there's, there's mechanical gear. Uh, we use uh, chain falls to uh, help with the final tightening and there's rendering and rendering to keep the friction from loading up in one place on a dead eye. Um, and at some point, the jib wire will come under load as well. We'll bring that back. It goes to the outside of the bow, 
a bolt works here. It has a tackle arrangement, lock and tackle arrangement that we use the crank call here at the foremast to do the tightening with. And uh, then we'll adjust. When we've got things adjusted, we'll lash everything. Everything is seized. So for lanyards, just go around and around and around. Legs get seized to each other in a pattern. Um, the, uh, the tightening of the jib tackle will go to one of those metal pins, which you see in the apron at the, at the bulwark. So uh, we have cleats and pins. The cleats are for the down hauls for head soles. We have three head soles when everything's rigged up. The pins are stout. They'll take the load for tensioning of the jib stay and the jib topsail stay when that comes around after we get the top mess up. So uh, that jaboom was sitting under the cover on deck. It's been varnished by the crew that have come aboard. It's been picked up yesterday under Jeff's guidance and been set up for going through the cap, getting the wires from guys hooked up. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to take an adventure on shore here um, so you can get kind of a side view of what's happening with the jib boom here as well as give you a view of what's going on on the rest of the deck. We still have some, some projects that we're, we're buttoning up. This is also the first rain after the cover has been off. So things are a little bit leaky down below, not horrible, but everything's swelling back up. So taking a look on the side here, you can see how much rigging goes out with this jib boom. So this, this right here, let's see if I can point to it. That's the heel block. So the heel of the jib boom will eventually make its way all the way out to that block and set in there. Uh, and while that's happening, we get to sort through all of the rigging that is kind of currently hanging off the end right here um, and get that all set into place. Once that's done, Cap, uh, what's the next bar that goes up? Well, we're looking to uh, put the topmasts up. And there's a, a flip of the coin as to whether the main topmast will lead the four topmast, um, or they might actually go up in the same day. Um, the main topmast has a little bit of rigging to it. It can go pretty quickly to the point of being fitted or fitted. Um, uh, that means there's a structure, a, a pin of massive proportions that goes across. Um, uh, and the terminology fid is a common one, um, and hence the phrase fitted. Uh, the four top miss is a totally different arrangement in the sense that it has a whole lot more rigging. So there's a staging, it goes up enough to get the cap above the cap of the lower mist so that rigging that's going to slide down halfway goes on first and then the last of the rigging that stays at the top goes on then we send that four top mist up the next step that can take two three days of uh, coordinated effort there's a lot of gear that goes in place that we don't want to send the top mist up too soon because then we only have to bring it down again. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a fair amount of that. We're looking at getting that started um, uh, this weekend week. Um, so uh, those come first, but other things can happen at the same time. With a bunch of crew, you can start spreading things out. Some crew out here doing the snugging up in preparation of putting sails out here. Uh, so, and not only that, uh, we took everything out of the boat. So there's still a lot of schlepping of things to, to make the boat ready to go sailing. Um, yeah, there's uh, equipment down below. Uh, there's, uh, uh, eventually the deck will get cluttered up with uh, the <laughs> chasseur. <laughs> chasseur and the rescue boat and yeah. yeah, all that good stuff. So if you take a look at the, the top of the lower mist here, you'll see that there's kind of a little hole up there that's that's where the top mist shoots through um so yeah there's a there's a cross tree arrangement 
and so there's a gun sight. So when you look at the foremast, you can see the square slot up there that's associated forward side and with the spreaders, just forward of the spreaders on center. So the topmast will go through there and then sight through the cap, such as a gun sight arrangement, and that aligns the topmast all the time, and then you support what extends above the lower mist with rigging. Um, and eventually, the yards will go up following them. Uh, the usual order, it doesn't have to be this way, but our typical order is the fore top yard goes up, and then the course yard goes up afterwards. Sure. Uh, and just to give you guys a little bit of perspective, I'm going to show you where the yards are currently. Um, and if you watch the video of the tour, um, you saw our spar shed, but I'm going to take you guys in there right now. Uh, Tracy Russ is asking, where are you in port at? Uh, so we're in the Canton industrial area. Um, so Canton is right over in that direction. You may recognize the Care First building if you are from Baltimore. Yeah, so uh, Patatsco River has a number of branches and creeks and rivers off of it. The Inner Harbor is at the head of a branch of the Patapsco, back in the day called the North Branch. So uh, um, that branch extends from around Fort McHenry and Lazaretto Point further to the northwest into the downtown of Baltimore, what became the downtown of Baltimore, the so-called Inner Harbor. So uh, we're actually in the North Branch, north of Fort McHenry, in an area that developed called Canton and the industrial area of that. Sure. Um, so just to the left of Captain Miles here, you can see the stack of spars. Uh, and normally these are spread out all through Sparlandia um, so we can get to them and we can varnish them. Uh, but because of the truncated season last year, the coats of varnish on these are still really good. Uh, we will put a couple more coats on before they send up because it's easy to do while they're here on the ground. Uh, but we also wanted to use this space as a kind of workshop. Uh, so we stacked everything up in the corner. But now it's time to start unpacking them. Uh, so here's Natalie. Natalie, wave to the camera. Uh, she's prepping the main top mist uh, for another coat of varnish. We're actually building up an area of varnish that we, we took all of the varnish off of this area um, to, to prep this and get it ready to go back up. We also have some other projects going on in here. We've got the sewing machine set up. There's a couple of bunk curtains that need to be made. Uh, if you look behind Captain Miles, you can see the outboard. Um, the outboard takes a lot of routine maintenance every year just to, to keep her running smoothly. Um, and you can see we're, we're starting to pull these other spires out and get them ready to be dressed and then put into the rig. Um, we also have our light boxes here that we had a, a volunteer, Jerry, um, uh, refinish everything. Uh, and they, they are looking pretty darn good, better than I've seen them in several years. Uh, so we're going to do a uh, we're going to start a, a, a thing that is going to be happening in, in every single Coffee with Captain. And we're going to be going through different common phrases and seeing if they have nautical origins or not. Uh, so the very first phrase we're going to tackle is one that's pretty common. Um, and it's the phrase, taken aback. So Captain Miles, is that a nautical origin or, or not? I believe it is. Uh, I actually uh, uh, first heard about it because of sailing. Mm. So uh, you back a sail when you're in a fore and aft rigged vessel to help twist it or to prevent twisting. Um, so uh, in a, uh, the sails of uh, long ago uh, that were square, there would be a process whereby those sails would periodically go aback. If you were maneuvering the vessel at sea and, and had a wind change, or not maneuvering, let's say you had a wind change and it caught you by surprise, caught aback. Um, and so uh, there's purpose and there's <laughs> being caught. So, and then that migrates into the world of mechanical power. Full astern is, is back full. 
back both full, depending upon how many propellers you might have. So uh, caught it back, uh, taken it back. Um, we backed. Uh, so uh, the process with Pride of Baltimore II is, is when we're going into attack, everything is braced up sharp, four, the uh, four and a half sails are trimmed in close, and we glide up to the point of the turn, and the helm goes over, um, and the rudder twists, and the vessel swings, and eventually the topsail goes aback, or the, if they're both up, the square topsail and the four topsail goes aback, top gallon I mean. Uh, that helps drive the bow around. Eventually the head soles will go back. Then at some point we shift the yards right away, the squares right away. Uh, in the old days they would leave them by back and deal with all the other sails. The foremast would stay back. In a three-masted square rigger, the foremast would stay back for a while while the middle mast would shift and then the mizzen the aftermast would shift. Um, but we found that we could get caught in a situation where it takes so long to deal with the stuff down on deck, the loose-footed foresail, uh, the headsails, that um, we'd be doing five knots, six knots to windward with the square topsail aback, and then it would take the entire crew on the braces to get it to swing through the, through the, through the wind. So we do that first. So that's a pretty atypical evolution, but with the efficiency of, of a boat that can come out of attack and start to accelerate pretty quick with a large proportion of four and a half sails below the squares, so we change the order. But then, once we got that around, then we take the headsails one by one, starting with the outermost head sole, past that, and then the next one in, if we have all three up, then the third one. That leads the four sole aback. In the middle of the boat, mainsail's drawing, head sole's are drawing, the top sole's are drawing, everything's in balance. We got plenty of control, and the four sole being loose footed has a lot of twist in it, so chances of it being absolutely a black, a back is slim. Then we pass that over. And of course, in there is the thing called the main runners. We'll talk about them later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we, we pass the, the topsail first so we don't get taken aback. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate all of you guys for joining us here this morning. Uh, tune in next week to see where we're at in the process of Uprig. And we'll do our best to share that with you and explain what's going on. And Captain Miles, do you have any parting words for us this morning? As always, stay diligent.